Welcome back. Okay, so this episode is going to be mostly the final prep. And then I think the very last episode, we'll be putting it all together and um, fr finish the framing and all that. So this will be all the prep of the painting, uh, final prep of the painting, also the prep of the, uh, the frame too, because the frame needs a little bit of love too. So we're going to start with the painting. So I've slept on this. I really like it. Um, I think everything's good. There isn't really anything that needs to be adjusted or fixed. So we're ready to go with the clear on this. Now the good news is if I put the clear on and I realize there's something that I missed or I need to fix, it's really, really simple. You just fix whatever's wrong with it and then throw another coat of clear on it and it's done. So it's not like a kind of all or nothing thing. Um, but I like to also make sure that I have as much done as I can because I'd rather not re-clear it. So <clears throat> what I'm going to use to clear this is the Createx uh, UVLS Clear. And this is the Satin Clear. Um, the mix ratio on this is roughly about 10% 4011 to the clear. Um, I start with that, uh, but it's, it's, it's always possible to add a little bit more, um, more reducer if you need a little bit thinner, but I try to stick with that 10%. It, it goes on really nicely. What I use to put this on generally on a small panel like this is I have the Grex uh, uh, Tritium, which is uh, set up with a 0.7 millimeter nozzle. Um, I like the spray pattern size. It's proportional to 5x7 and smaller, so it really works pretty well. And in that 0.7 will still take the 1 to 10, uh, or not sorry, sorry, the 10% uh, reduction ratio. You don't have to over thin it like you would if you had it through a smaller brush like a... Um, like a 0.5 millimeter airbrush, which you can certainly clear. I use this for clearing also on the really small stuff sometimes. This is a um, Eclipse uh, CS, but um, what I've done is I've taken out all the uh, front end components and replaced them with 0.5 millimeter components. So this is a 0.5 millimeter gravity feed brush. So sometimes I'll use this too, but that needs a little bit extra reduction. All right, so... Um, before I go on, a little bit of uh, safety notes. This is a um, acrylic aliphatic urethane. So, um, well, I mean, you should be protecting your lungs with all of the paint, no matter what, even if it's non-toxic and non-flammable. Um, so normally what I do is I have a hooded, ventilated spray booth for, for doing stuff like this. But for you guys, since it's very difficult for you, for you guys to see what's going on in that, because it's about two feet by three feet and it's got a hood on it, um, you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. There's a small window that I can use, almost like a sandblasting window that I can use to see what I'm doing. But uh, for this, I'm going to do the first coat of clear just out in the open. Um, what I will be wearing, though, um, is I use a, for most, most applications, uh, general applications, I use this RZ mask, which I'll have links for all this too. This is a great mask. It's an N95 mask with a replaceable filter on the inside. And then I do have a standard regular respirator too. So um, all those things will keep this stuff out of your lungs, which is really, really good. That's what you want to be doing. You don't just want to be breathing this. All right. So I have the UVLS satin already pre-mixed. Um, this is 10%. There's just enough to get the first coat on. So that's what I'll do here. And then I'll mix up some more. The reason why I have this pre-mixed is um, generally when you reduce most of their paint, but especially the clears, uh, they take about 10 minutes to emulsify once you add the reducer and mix it. <clears throat> so you really want to kind of let that sit. This is nice because this is all ready to go. So I usually mix it up for the project beforehand so they don't have to wait the 10 minutes, you know, while I'm, like if I run out, for instance. Um, you know, I don't want to do that because then I just have to mix up more paint and then wait. So I pre-mix it. Um, the nice thing about this clear too, <clears throat> there are no windows. In fact, the longer you wait between coats, the better. The more dry it is, the more it has a chance for that, all the solvents to, or the water to evaporate out and dehydrate. Um, we'll just make a better finish for you. So uh, there's no windows, which is great. Unlike urethanes where you have a very specific window to hit so that the clear melts together each layer, this is not like that. It likes to stick to itself when it's dry. So, all right, I'm going to put on my mask and get this set up. You should still be able to hear me, but it will be a little bit muffled. So, there we go. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to spray across with about a 50% overlap um, across the panel. So, uh, so that will allow me to uh, just keep a really nice wet edge across it. 
I'm going to go, the very first coat will be a little bit lighter than normal. I like to put that coat on a little bit thinner just so it has a chance to kind of, you know, kind of acclimate itself to the paint. They really work well together, but that first coat I like to put on a little bit lighter. So that's what I'll do. Okay, so load this up and we'll get ready to go. <clears throat> okay. So first pass is, again, it's just start at the top, keep it really even all the way across, same distance all the way across, and just about a 50% overlap. And that is it. Really easy, right? Let that clear out a little bit. Take this mask off so you can hear me. Okay, so that's the first coat. Um, it's really nice. What I'm going to do now is just keep, um, I have a separate section actually. I usually use this, the spray hood for this. Keeps the air moving uh, around it and that's what you want. You don't want to put heat on this. You don't want to use a hair dryer or anything to aggressively, to aggressively dry it. You just want to keep the air moving around it gently and keep the humidity at a, you know, you don't want it super humid if you can help it. And, um, you want to keep it about room temperature, about 70, 75 degrees. And, um, and this will dehydrate probably, I usually give it about 10 to 15 minutes for, for each coat. But again, if you have stuff to do, go do it because you can uh, you can let this totally dry. You can let this go for an hour before the next coat. So this now will get, this painting will probably get four to five coats, generally including that light first tack coat. Uh, and then and it'll be it'll be pretty much ready to go. So um, what we'll do is I won't film each coat. I will come back and show you when it's done. And then we'll jump on to the frame. All right, we will be right back. Okay, so while I'm waiting for coats, clear coats to dry on that painting, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of work on the frame. So this is one of the original um, frames that I had made up when we were designing these frames. This one made by my buddy John Kelly, a great woodworker. So this actually had another painting in it for the longest time. Uh, that painting was then reframed, and um, I just put this frame aside. It had been through um, a couple shows, so it has some um, scratches in it and some dings. But what's beautiful about these frames um, is they're all hardwood. This is all maple. Um, so it's very easy to uh, to kind of do all kinds of um, maintenance and adjusting and, and fixing on these frames. I've had some of them even fall and um, I'm able to work out those the areas of damage. Um, so what I've started to do is just kind of sand it all out. Um, you can see there's a little bit of um, sanding or, or saw machine work that really is uh, very subtle. You can't even see this when it's painted, but I'm going to work all that out. What I'm concerned with, though, are these couple big scratches right here. And I say big scratches, but they're not really even very big. So what I'm going to do to fill them, you could use regular wood filler. Um, I have Bondo hanging around, which is also really nice because of the way that it sands. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of work that really, um, work that into those couple scratches, put a little bit on there, and then I'm going to just uh, feather them out just to kind of get rid of them. I could sand them all out, but the you run the risk of changing the profile of the front of the frame. So if those scratches are deep enough, it'll just you'll sand down this whole area and make it wider, and I don't want that. All right, so I get a little bit of bondo on there, and then I have these plastic razor blades and just use that to run across this and just fill those scratches in. These scratches are very subtle so they're not really you know, this is really just cheap insurance, as my buddy Chris Arpin says from Createx. This will just ensure that there's nothing there's not there's no divot in there at all that's really it the rest of the frame is in really really good shape so I don't have to worry about that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that around so that can dry there but on this part here all I'm gonna end up doing is this is just a uh, uh, Nova Star Flex sandpaper uh, and I have this small sanding block with it so this is what I'm kind of using to this is actually 400 grit I don't want to go any more aggressive than this since this was a finished frame anyway. I'm really just trying to take the curse off, you know, anything that's odd or strange with this. And um, I'm not going to bore you with a half an hour of me sanding this, but uh, but that's what's involved. It's just going to be feathering out any of the, 
you know, the areas of damage, um, and there aren't many, or anything that, you know, really wasn't addressed originally, which, like I said, this was a finished frame originally, so it was finished sanded, so there's really not much I have to do with this, which is great. All right, so join me again, and then um, we'll talk a little bit about painting this, and then um, we'll get the frame painted, and um, and you'll be able to see the uh, the painting also with all the clear on it too. So be right back. Okay, all sanded up and ready to go. Everything's dry, <clears throat> clean, and um, what I'm going to do since this frame will be open meaning there won't be any glass on here. Um, there's, um, there's no need to have a, um, uh, a spacer or a, uh, a liner in this frame. <clears throat> that being said, um, because there's no liner, that liner also cleans up this wooden edge. So what I'm gonna need to do, I would do it anyway, but in this case, I really wanna make sure that I spray inside of this and have everything nice and clean because you're gonna be able to see that clearly. Um, so the first uh, coat for this is going to be the Autoborn Sealer Black, uh, and this will um, this will seal everything up really nicely. It'll also give me one last chance um, to sand out any kind of you know um, uh, minor like imperfections that that are still in there. Uh, it's a really nice product as far as the way that it uh, you can kind of manipulate it after, so you can sand it. Um, so that's really nice too. Um, just I basically use this regular spray gun with this. Um, again, this is 10% reduction for this. Uh, so I'll use my LPH 80 to do this. Again, I'm not going to show you spraying this only because it's in the booth and and uh, and that makes for bad video. Um, but it's uh, it's pretty straightforward the way that it's sprayed. So what I'll do is I'll do the inside and the back first, and um, any overspray, you know, I'll, I'll hit the sides as well. Uh, so that will just leave the face left. Once I get all that done, then I'll flip it over, do the face and the sides again, and then it'll be done. So I actually hit the sides twice, but that's just because of the way that the uh, the, the frame is set up. And then once all that's done, um, I'll put usually about, this will only take about two coats because it's in such good shape right now. Um, it, it, sometimes it takes three, but generally this stuff covers so well, only two coats will do it. Uh, and then again, I probably won't have to sand anything, but it could take a little bit of light sanding. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the Autoborn sealer works the same way. You, you know, you wait 10 to 15 minutes until it's totally dry and, uh, and then apply the next coat. So you can apply, apply really as many coats as you want, depending on what you're doing but I find that you know this stuff covers really well especially since this was already painted black so there we go all right so join me again the frame will be all done and um, yeah the painting actually needs only one more coat of clear so I'll show you that too and uh, and then uh, we'll be in good shape all right be right back okay so all set here now with uh, with the frame so this is um, all the um, Autoborn sealer is on. Um, I did have to sand a little bit here. Um, just use thousand grit to kind of get out just a couple little dust things that kind of burned through right on the edge, which is totally fine um, for this because I'll end up spraying this one more time with uh, about two coats of the um, opaque black, the opaque jet black. Um, I really like the base coat sealer, but what I find is sometimes when I use the uh, UVLS satin or UVLS matte, it retains this kind of grayish color, where if I use the opaque black, it is really jet black when it's done. It's nice. So I'm going to hit that two more times with the jet black, and then I'm going to hit it with the UVLS satin. So the next time you see this, it'll be it'll be ready to go. So the other thing that I did in, along the way in between coats of this guy drying is I got the rest of the satin clear done on the Chevelle painting so that is now done so what I like about the satin finish the UVLS uh, satin is that um, it uh, really retains the look of the painting it uh, it does deepen it a little bit like a gloss clear but it doesn't go crazy with it and it just gives it just kind of a natural it looks like it's just you know kind of the, the painting which is still raw but it's not it evens out all the paint strokes and everything um, which is nice. So that's how that came out. So that's that's ready to go. What I do need to do though is I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm gonna use maybe hopefully brushed aluminum, but to build up this background, add a little bit of a pinstriped edge to it by mounting this panel on another panel. Uh, and like I said, that it's usually gonna be like 
some sort of, I think some sort of metallic metal, uh, just maybe raw aluminum or brushed aluminum or something, but I figure it'll have a relief like about that all the way around the edge. And that'll be nice because that'll set the painting off from the black background, which will be felt, which I'll show you once everything is ready to go. So that's where we're at right now. All right, so I'm going to go put a couple more coats of um, uh, the opaque black on this, and then I'm going to hit it with the, the sealer, I mean the, the UVLS satin, and that frame will be ready to go. Uh, so check back and well actually you don't have to check back because you guys don't have to wait <laughs> hang on one second and here is where we are at right now so the um, frame is all painted and cleared it's had um, about 12 hours to totally set up so this this frame is now ready to go that satin clear just just works so nice it's really durable um, it evens out the sheen. Uh, just, just really, really nice. I'm, I've really fallen in love with that UVLS satin, uh, and it's very durable too. So it holds up really, really well. Um, and I showed you guys uh, that the painting is all set too. I might hit this really lightly with some dry, maybe 2500 paper, just to kind of take off the last of the nibs and maybe put one more coat of clear on it. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, there's still um, the clear is really nice it does you, you can put a little bit on or you can kind of load it up i've chosen to put a little on less is more for me but uh but still there's a couple little dust things in there that uh that i may want to try to get out um so that's coming so for the backdrop what i've done is i've cut a piece of lexan so a lot of times i'll use just a piece of aluminum um, but i am without a shear to cut that aluminum here so um, I, what i've decided to do since i really want a silver background behind this painting um, I've cut a piece of Lexan. Uh, the thickness is really nice. It makes it look, uh, you know, very solid. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this with Autoborn Sealer Black. And then I'm going to um, spray it with uh, the Quicksilver Chrome. So I'll do the edges too. So this will look like a solid piece of aluminum when it's done. And then what's going to happen is it'll just add a tiny bit of relief around the painting. So it'll the painting will mount on this sheet so you'll just see the very edge of this bright silver outline around the whole painting and then I've got the piece of felt um, kind of laid out what I'll do next is um, here's the backing for this this painting and it's just regular MDF board um, and what I'll end up doing with this is same thing I'll spray this with Autoborn sealer dark or black and then opaque black and then um, satin uh, clear on this as well. So this will fit on the back of the frame here <clears throat> like this. And then what's going to happen on the other side of this, the rough side is, and I'll show you guys this when I get to it, um, once it's all painted and cured, um, I'll end up applying glue all over this putting the felt on top of that, stretching it so it's nice and smooth and flat, putting a bunch of weight on it, letting it sit for 24 hours, and then uh, the backing will be done. So you'll have this felt background. I'll cut the little block that this will go on. It'll mount above. It'll attach onto the felt, and then there's no glass on this, so it's really easy. And uh, that'll all go together, and we'll be off and running. So it'll be ready to go. All right, let me get to work. I'm going to, um, I'll paint what I'll do is I'll paint the backdrop, the background, um, and the um, the the liner here. This this little guy here. I'll do the black and the silver. You guys don't necessarily need to see that. Um, so when I get back, um, those pieces will be done. Um, I'll show you how I glue the felt on. That'll be a, a quick little um, next chapter. Um, and then by that time, we'll have everything set. Um, we'll drill it all out, put it all together, and uh, this guy will be done. All right, so hang with me, uh, and I will be right back. So here are all the components as we stand right now. <clears throat> the, uh, this is the back, <clears throat> the MDF. Um, this is uh, painted with um, Autoborn Sealer Black and then uh, Opaque Jet Black and then Satin. There was... You can see these odd, I don't know what they are. They have no dimension to them. I did sand them out. It's a weird staining, but it kept coming through. So normally this would be grounds for dismissal <laughs> for this piece. But uh, it's the 
you know, the back needs to be just as good as the rest of it. But uh, what I do normally with paintings, uh, I have my business card and a bumper and then the wire is going to go across. So I think all in all, that's going to be okay for, for, for that. Again, it's not dimensional. It's just a weird kind of a show through thing. Um, but that's how the, the back came out. And then, of course, the other side is blank. We'll be dealing with that in a minute. Uh, Pre-cut the felt. So I'm going to give you kind of the preview of how this is going to kind of look when it's done. So the job right now is to get the felt onto this board and nice and flat. We'll get to that in a second. But like I said, we'll give you the preview now. This is the Lexan, the piece of Lexan with the uh, Quicksilver Chrome on it which um, the way this worked was there's base coat sealer black again on this, just as a, I, I like it because it'll turn this real slick Lexan into something that will really accept that, that silver really well. And, uh, and that's how, how the silver worked out. It's just along the edge because that's all that's really going to show. Oh, I got one more thing to grab. One second here. <clears throat> the mounting plate for this. Oops, sorry about that. The mounting plate for this will be just a piece of black PVC. I'll clean this up. Uh, this will go right about here. And then that will just give it enough height off of the felt to kind of give it that little drop shadow, which is nice. So that plate will go there. This is how the painting came out. I did end up um, re-sanding this with 1200 and giving this two more coats of satin to give it just to take out some of those little tiny dust nibs and just give it a really smooth flat finish so that's how that came up so this will flow or this will attach to the silver sheet or the piece right here that'll give it that silver outline that silver relief and then finally the frame is going to look like this and that is kind of how it's all going to come together when it's done so it's nice when i kind of dry fit it this way it just gives me a good idea to make sure there's you know nothing else that has to happen and usually at this stage what it'll be is um not in this particular instance but sometimes deciding what this outline silver you know is going to be whether it's going to be silver or gold or copper or color um, this is a good chance for me to kind of look at it as a finished piece and say okay yeah that works or you know i have to do something different so, but I definitely think the silver works with that. It just kind of sets it off and works out pretty well. And I can't show you, but <clears throat> as you pick this up and tilt it, or as you walk by and the light hits that silver, um, it also moves as well. So you will see it against the white where right now with this angle, you can't, which is awesome. That's just, just what I'm looking for. All right. Um, so let's put this aside. We'll get the felt glued down because that's going to be the next time sink kind of thing. Um, can't do much until the until the glue dries. So um, we're gonna we're gonna take care of that right now. So what we do is um, so obviously there are two sides. There's the the frame side and then the finish side. So we're gonna put the put it that way for now. Um, I just use um, Gorilla Glue, the wood glue. It's super strong. Uh, any kind of glue will really work for this uh, as long as it sticks to the wood. Uh, but I find this is easier easier to work with. Um, the open time is just just enough and it's super strong too uh and it works really most glue will work with the felt it'll just it'll just stick but this is also the stuff i use when i would laminate like if i wanted a wooden background on this and i needed to laminate i wouldn't laminate this piece this side anyway but if i would laminate it um i would use this stuff too so it really works well let's drop some gloves on just so i don't get glue all over my hands because it is like finger painting. Normally I do this on the other bench, the more work dirty bench, but um, we'll do it here. So I'll try to be neat about it. <laughs> okay. So we're just gonna take the cover off this. <clears throat> and the idea is to just get, get glue over the entire surface. I know, exciting, right?
Okay, that's good. There we go. Okay, so from here, I just want to make sure I don't have any glue on my, my fingers. I don't want to get any glue on the uh, on the felt. So there, usually, sometimes there's a grain to the felt, one side or the other. This one doesn't seem to be, seems to be the same on both sides. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, it's, it's personal preference, which one you like better. So what I do is just kind of roll this down. It's not an exact science. You can, you can pretty much do this however you like. Um, as far as getting this smooth and flat, again, it's pretty straightforward with felt. It just kind of works. So even the little wrinkle at the bottom, it just, just kind of goes away. It's not like you have to use a laminating tool or anything to really get it to stay flat. So that's nice. I do kind of put a little bit of pressure on it, outward pressure to kind of, um, you know, kind of, uh, smooth it out and get it, get it to, uh, work. And then you should do what I do. <clears throat> flip it upside down and put a little bit of weight on it. So what I'm going to do to protect this though is I'm going to use another piece of MDF. So use another piece of MDF. This has two smooth sides which is nice. That on top. Actually, I use two pieces just so I get the whole thing covered. There we go. And then a little bit of weight. So this is a awesomely awesome steel block from my buddy Ken Taylor, who's a great artist and machinist and has a lot of really neat stuff like giant blocks of steel so and that's it so now i just let that sit for uh for you know um ideally it should sit overnight that way it's absolutely positively dry um, but this glue sets up pretty quickly i'll keep the pressure on it for a while and then i'll pull this off just so that i can op flip it over so the air can get to it as well but this will keep it nice and flat and and stable. So that's what we got. All right. So join me in a few minutes once uh, the glue is dry and um, we'll keep going. Okay, let's finish this up. So here is the the uh, Lexan panel with the silver on it. So that's all set. What I've done off camera was I drilled, pre-drilled a hole in the center of this PVC. It's This is just a, what is that, a quarter inch PVC. Um, so it's just a PVC block. And then what I did was uh, to attach that, I centered that and then I used uh, uh, 3M VHB tape, the very high bond tape, which is nice. I like this stuff. I used to use a lot of epoxy to kind of glue these pieces together. <clears throat> but what I found is the VHB has an excellent bond uh, and it's archival in that you can remove the pieces without destroying them um, with with the two-part epoxy this is all one thing and even though this is the support for the painting so it's nice to be able to still do some maintenance on it if you can so um, i really like that stuff so what's going to happen next is i'll mount the painting onto this back and the same thing i'll use the same vhb tape because i'll be able to remove that painting off of this back if i ever want to change it or if you know someone who collects it wants something a little bit different um so that's how that works <clears throat> so what i'll do <clears throat> So I won't use a ton of this stuff because it's so strong. And again, I want to be able to get this off. If, if I were to sheet this whole thing with the VHB, you would really never get it off. It is really, really strong stuff. So I'll grab four pieces to start. And I'll just drop them in the corners. So with this stuff, uh, I like to leave a little bit of... A space between the <clears throat> tape and the edge of the border again if you line this stuff right up with the corner <clears throat> excuse me it is very difficult to to like kind of get underneath this to to uh to kind of like what what i would do is i would take a, uh, a spatula metal spatula and slide it in and cut the foam the adhesive will hold on but the foam will cut so that's kind of how i get at it if it's right on the edge you try to pry it you can do some damage to the painting because it does it really holds well 
Okay, one piece for the biddle for good luck. Okay. And then just peel it back. This is ready to go. I want to make sure this is flat, so when I push down, it pushes down evenly. There we go. Okay. So line this up. And before it sets, you do have a second where you can pop it off and correct anything. So that looks good. So that's all set. Good. Okay, so now that's attached. And so the next step is to put it on the backing. So for the backing, what I've also done is pre-drilled all the holes. Um, there's a center hole for the painting, and then there's small holes on each corner to kind of hold everything together. So that's how this works. Um, this frame was originally without glass and you notice all the holes along the edge the original backing was held in with little nails all the way around the outside you know inside edge which was pretty neat um, but I decided to go with the screws for this one in case I ever want to change this out and put glass in it um, <clears throat> it's easier you know if there are screws than the nails because the nails you have to basically pry them all out so for the felt to clean this up just use a piece of tape or a lint roller will get all the stuff up and for cleaning this when it's out in the real world I do the same thing so I'll just use a piece of tape to get any dust off it and if it ever needs major maintenance uh, you can always take it apart and just essentially vacuum it it works out really well now that this is glued on there that's like bulletproof which is nice okay so make sure up is up which is that <clears throat> and Grab a Phillips screwdriver, this one. So the mounting screw goes on the back and just poke it through so it comes out the other side. And PVC is really nice because it, um, it threads really solidly, but it's not like, you know, I mean, I had to pre-drill the hole in it, but, um, but it, um, you don't have to tap you know, threads into it or anything, so it works out really well. Tighten that down. Again, with PVC, you got to be careful not to over tighten because you know it is it is a of like a plastic material almost like, so you don't want to strip it. What's nice about no glass is I can always adjust and arrange after I put it together. <clears throat> where if there's a sheet of glass over this, you'd have to get it right before you put the glass in, obviously, because you can't mess with it. So get that nice and tight. Hold up, like that. And on the frame. There it is. That is up. The only difference for up and down in this is when I drill the holes for the... Uh, wire it uh, actually went into the frame as well so um so i gotta make sure that sides up but that's how we're looking so far so all right for the screws for this just small wood screws and these are pre-drilled too but i still try to be real careful with these small screws because maple is a real hard wood and the last thing i want to do is snap off the top of these screws trying to get them in so just snug is good enough because it um it's like i said it's it's a hard wood so um you don't have to crank these things down to hold them together they hold really really well So 
a little more in. There we go. Okay, so now that is secure. It's secure in there so I can check it to make sure it's straight. And that's how we're looking. Okay, so for the wire, it's really pretty academic from here on out. This is like every painting. So there are the, uh, the, the D hooks. The framing wire. I have short screws for these just to, so they don't poke through. So those lock in there. I have the um, cordless drill with screw bit, um, you know, screwdriver bits. But for this, I like to do this all by hand to get a real good feel for how much tension to put on these. And again, I don't want to bust these screws off. I have done that in the past and it's a nightmare trying to get the uh, broken screw out of the hardwood. So, um, so I just use the regular screwdriver for most of it. Works out really well. <clears throat> for framing wire, I always use number four, or four gauge framing wire, and this is all coated. So it's just, it's nice, it's real clean. It's way overrated for the weight that these paintings are, but it's not ridiculously heavy either. So it's a nice combination. It will never break. Like this will never fall off the wall because a wire breaks. Um, and the coated really works well just because it keeps it nice and clean and tarnish free. So these just get tied on. I probably should have shown you how I do that. <clears throat> I had a great framer show me a lot of tricks at one point. So I'll show you what that is right there. The little framing. The framing knot. Step over here. Get some slack. I'm really sad. The company that I got all my framing supplies from was framingsupplies.com and there's their number. Unfortunately, you can't call them because they have retired. It was a family-run business and the owners just were ready to retire and when they retired, they closed up shop, which was very sad because I loved them because it was like a very mom and pop type of thing, but they had everything and they were really knowledgeable. So I'm sad to see them go. All right, so the way the framing knot goes, so you feed it through the D-ring underneath like that. And then you pull it back over, nice and tight, like that. And then you go under the wire. There we go. Try, try to keep it tight. Hand hands this morning. There we go. So underneath the wire, pull it back and then back over like that. So now you're, you've created this little ring right there. And then you take that and you go back through the D ring, down and through. And then when you come back out, you're aimed back at the wire. And now you just wrap it around the wire. And I, there is no set number of wraps. Um, you put, you know, five to seven or whatever. Just something that looks good. And this really just locks it in. <clears throat> it makes it look nice, too. There we go. Clip the excess. And that is wired. Wired for sound. All right. So the next thing, so I have this, again, I have this odd thing coming through, which is okay because I put um, the bumpers on it. These are the, uh, just the rubber bumpers. These um, keep the wall safe, but it also keeps the painting off the wall a little bit. So there's air that can get behind. On this painting, it doesn't make as big of a difference because it's, you know, it's MDF. But on a painting with a dust jacket, and it's nice to have air moving behind the painting as well. It just keeps everything um, from collecting moisture and dirt and dust and that kind of thing. But so it's kind of multi-purpose stuff. So for this, 
Yeah, so the business card is going to cover that that mess. So for that, um, <clears throat> I use just Scotch ATG double-sided tape. Put a few pieces of that on there. And that lines up right on the purse. Goes there. And that is it. That is it. So I'll wipe this all down and clean it up. Um, but that gives you the idea. So that is how it works. So there is your finished Chevelle painting. Um, the only thing I might do, if the, I'm bringing this to a show in Salt Lake City in a couple of weeks, um, which is why it was kind of a rush to get it, you know, in a frame. Um, when I, if it doesn't sell, if I, if I bring it back with me, I may consider putting glass in this one. Um, it changes the kind, kind of kind of way it works. The glass keeps the painting safe, even though this is already cleared. But it also keeps the felt clean, which is also nice. And these frames are set up for the glass. It's just I'd have to you know take it apart and um, add the liner and the glass and that kind of thing. It's not a big deal, but uh, but you know I may do that when I get back. But for now, this one's ready. So there you go. So there's the entire Chevelle painting all the way from start to finish. So thank you for joining me for this one, and um, we'll jump on a new painting next. Um, so uh, keep Thursdays open and keep an eye out for the new paintings. Um, if you've missed any of the episodes, you can go back and watch them. Um, there's only one that's missing, which is episode 8, so uh, that is among the missing, unfortunately. But all the rest of them are there, so it's definitely enough idea. So thanks for joining me, and consider liking and subscribing, and uh, telling all your friends. And um, we'll go on to the next painting. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care.